Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at how to use fixed point iteration to find roots um, of functions, just general functions. Um, so we're looking at an example here. Um, we've got this rather nasty looking function um, and we're asked to use fixed point iteration to find the root fx equals zero, accurate to three decimal places. Um, now you may recall from, from the last video that fixed point iteration finds the solution um, to g of x is equal to x. And now the problem here is we're not trying to find um, our function equal to x, we're trying to find our function equal to zero. And so what we need to do is we need to rearrange this and try and get it into this form first of all. So if we start with um, what we're trying to find, so x cubed plus x squared minus x root x minus a half is equal to zero. And what we need to do is we need to rearrange that so that it's x equal to some function. And then our fixed point iteration will work. Um, now you may recall that not all functions are going to converge to a root. Um, so in an exam setting, you'd be guided into which one um, you need to find, or you'll be asked to show that it can be written in some way. Um, and then you'll be told to use that one. Um, in this case, I know, uh, because I wrote the question, that we need, we're going to make this x squared the subject first, and then we'll square root. As I say, there are lots of different ways you could rearrange this to get an x on its own. Um, so I'm going to aim to make this x squared uh, this on its own first, which means I need to get rid of this x cubed, this x root x, and this half. So I'm going to take all those over to the side by subtracting, adding, and adding those terms respectively. Um, so we'll put our x root x first, because that's positive, minus the x cubed plus the one half is equal to zero, um, and then we're going to square root. Um, and this um, we're going to call g of x, this function here. Okay, let's get to uh, finding this solution then. Okay, so I've just rearranged f of x um, to get it into x is equal to g of x to work out what our function g of x is going to be for our iterative process. Um, now we're told that our root is between 0 and 1. Um, so our first step is to make a guess at what x naught is going to be. Um, now again, in an exam question you might be asked this or you might be asked to sort of infer where to start from here. Um, but for us, because I know it's between 0 and 1, um, and we're not going to run into any problems if x is equal to 1, uh, I'm just going to start with 1 because it's nice and easy. Now if I type that into my calculator, um, what I need to do uh, is uh, x1 is equal to g of x0, which is g of this number here, 1. Um, if I type that into my calculator, I get 0 0.7071. Okay, so then to work out what x2 is, um, we work out g of x1, which is this, 0 0.7071, um, which gives me 0 0.8604. Okay, um, now a handy hint, if you're doing this on your calculator, um, if you type this, if you press your x0 first as 1 and then hit the equals button, um, you can then type this into your calculator almost exactly, um, but instead of these x's, swap them with the with the answer button. If you replace all those x's with ants on your calculator, um, what that'll do is you can then press equals and it'll keep substituting the answer back into your function g of x. So it'll save you a lot of time rather than having to type it out each time. Um, so if you remember one thing or one top tip from that video, Type this into your calculator using the ANTS button, the ANSWER button, it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, anyway, so if we carry on this sequence, we get x3 is equal to 0 0.81288. Uh, x4 is equal to 83412. 83412. Okay, and if we do this, over and over again, eventually we get to the point 
where we have 0 0.8 2807 and 0 0.82809 and 0 0.82808 um, um, and so on. So we'll get to this point where some of these digits are repeating. Um, so I'm assuming that to three decimal places my solution is going to be 0 0.828. Um, 0.828. Okay, now in this case, um, this is actually sufficient to show that our solution is 0 0.828 accurate to three decimal places. Um, and the reason that's the case is because if you look at the two previous terms in, this, in our sequence uh, of our estimates, um, they're 0 0.828.08 is in between the previous two um, previous two estimates. So we've bound it in between these two and because both of these will clearly round to 0 0.828 then that's our solution. Um, now that isn't actually always the case and um, this diagram if we draw this is going to give us a cobweb diagram and um, if we had a staircase diagram all of these would either be increasing or decreasing so there's nothing to stop this number getting bigger and bigger and bigger, even very, very slowly, but eventually getting out of this 828 to three decimal places range. Um, so if we think our answer is um, 0.828, accurate to three decimal places, thinking back to our um, finding roots video, um, to be absolutely 100% certain, um, if it's not bound between the previous two estimates, we have to substitute in, um, or we have to find, f of well, the lower bound for this and um, to three decimal places is 0.8275 um, and we'd need to calculate calculate f of 0.8285 um, and what you'll get is that one of these is above the x-axis one of these is positive one of these is below the x-axis one of these is negative so then because we've got a change of sign and um, you can show that that is the the correct route